Feeling intimidated about teaching math to your kids? This video is for you. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Jennifer from Branch to Bloom, and if you're new here, please click subscribe and like the video if you like it, and feel free to share it with your friends. Today's video is the second in my math series, Teaching Montessori Math at Home, and in the last video, I talked a little bit about introducing place value using the golden bead material, and today we're gonna talk about uh, introducing the numeral cards. So let's get started with the lesson. So last time we got together to talk about Montessori place value and base 10, we were introducing the golden bead material. And today we're going to be introducing the number cards that go along with them. And the materials you'll need for these lessons are just the number cards, one to 9,000, which I have here. And then you'll also want this place value mat, um, which has a space on the right for units and then tens, and then hundreds and then thousands. And the reason we do it in this orientation is because it's just the way that you would write a number, 1,111 you would do in this order. So you always wanna make sure that when the child is doing work that it's in this order. Um, so when you do the work, um, invite your child to come and sit next to you either um, at a table like I am or on the floor. And actually for the first presentation, you want a solid workspace. So I'm just gonna flip this over so you can see the back side is just a nice blank space for you to use if you're on the floor or you can just do it straight on the table. Um, and you'll need these number cards. And the first thing that you'll do is called the number slide and you'll take the, um, the cards lined up like this and just hold on to the thousands place and you're gonna just slide the hundreds off and then you'll slide the tens and then slide the units. So you should have four different um, place value stacks. And then we're gonna flip them over just to add a little bit of mystery. So we'll flip them all over to start with. The next thing that you'll do is just pull the bottom card out from each of your stack. It will be the 1,000, 100, the 10, and the unit. I should mention these need to be in order for this lesson, so make sure that they're all in the right order for this lesson. And kind of place them in different, a little bit like this on your mat. And do just a quick three period lesson. So first name the different parts, um, the different numbers here, and tell your child this is 1,000, this is 100, this is 110, and this is one. And this is just to kind of review and make sure that they know what you're talking about and that they recognize the numbers. So then ask them to recognize them, do the second part. And you could say, could you please tap the 100? Could you please draw a circle around the 1000? Could you uh, pick up the 10? Would you please draw a square around the unit? Um, and so that helps you to know, okay, yes, they definitely know what those different numbers are. They need to understand this before you can move forward. If they don't, then you need to go back um, and work some more with number rods and with sandpaper letters if they don't understand the units and um, just work some more with uh, zero and, and some of the other preliminary work before you move forward if they don't get it. Um, so. Once you're sure that they understand that, you could say, okay, will you please um, tell me what this is? And they would say 100, what is this? This is 110, what is this? 1000, what is this one unit? Okay, now you know you've done naming, you've done recognition, and you've done recall. You know that they know what these are. You can put them back into their stacks like this. 
Now, the reason that we flip them over is just so that it's not a distraction to the child, but also because it makes it a little bit more interesting for this age group that makes them kind of wonder like what's gonna happen next and it adds a little bit of suspense. So what you'll do next is say, I want to count the units and ask your child to help you. And usually kids are excited to help you. So you'll take just the units and you're gonna just count the units this way. One unit, two units, and you're gonna flip them over and just make another pile here. Three units, four units, five units, six units, seven units, eight units, nine units. And then you can put them back and take your next stack and do the same. So you will count one ten, two tens, three tens, four tens, five tens, etc. all the way to nine tens. You wanna say tens, not 10, and hundreds, not 100, uh, because you really wanna emphasize for children at this age that you're actually counting more than one 10. Um, in English, we usually would say 100, 200, but when you get to the 100 pile here, you will say um, 100, 200s. And also, I like to point out when I do the tens, the hundreds, and the thousands, how many zeros there are. This is just a good chance to um, remind them that there's one zero in 10, there's two in 100. So, two hundreds, three hundreds, et cetera, all the way to nine hundreds, and then you'll put your stack back. And repeat the same thing with the thousands. How many zeros are there? There are three, 1,000, 2,000, et cetera, all the way to 9,000. Children in this age usually get really excited about the fact that they're counting such big numbers, by the way. It's pretty fun for them to go all the way up to 9,000. My 8,000 was in the wrong spot, there we go. Um, and then when you are finished counting them all out, you'll just kind of re, you can reverse the slide this way so that when your cards are all stacked back up, they should say 1,111, showing all the different place values. And that is the first presentation in this lesson. Now that you've introduced your child to the number cards themselves, we're going to do the whole layout. So what you'll do is just uh, bring your mat to your workspace and make sure that the units are on the right and the thousands are on the left. A quick note in case you're new to Montessori, uh, the reason that the units and the thousands are the same color is because they both are ones. So we have one unit and then we have the tens and the hundreds and then 1,000. And if we had on this mat, which we will later on in different math work um, as we get more advanced, if you keep going with these place values, the next one would be uh, 10,000 and that would be blue, 100,000 would be red, and then 1 million would be green again. Um, sometimes that's confusing because when you're just looking at this, these four, it can be like confusing about why the units and the thousands are both green. So I just wanted to address that. And so what you'll do is call your child to come and sit next to you at your workspace. It could be a table or the floor, wherever is comfortable and have them sit next to you so that they are facing the mat the same direction that you are. And you will take out your number cards. These number cards are just paper uh, and they're not even laminated because I am pretty um, careful about how much plastic we use in our family. Um, but these are the ones that are linked in the description box below. I will also link the wooden card set that I have, which is also great for this. Um, and you could certainly laminate them if you want them to be um, laminated for uh, longevity at your house. I have found with my two kids that I really don't need to laminate things unless they are gonna get wet. So what we, what we do here is we're just gonna do the same slide we did before. So I'm sliding these off. So I have 1,000s and then the hundreds. I'm gonna make a pile here, tens and units. 
Okay, and we're gonna count all the way to 9,000 so you can tell that to your child. I like to point out that there's one zero in 10, there are two in 100, and there are three in 1,000 at the beginning of this lesson. And then I will turn these over. Again, to add a little bit of mystery and set them up here because we're not using them yet. And get out the units and say we're going to start by counting the units. Now there's a little bit of Montessori controversy about which direction you should lay your materials out on this mat. Some people start at the bottom. I'm in that group where you start here and the reason that I do that is because when you get to nine there's no more room and so you have to move over to the tens column. Um, that's just the way that I was taught, but lots of people do it from the top down and that's okay too. Uh, the reasoning there is that um, that's the way that we taught the numbers and counters, the cards and counters in the previous lessons, and it's just a more natural progression um, to count from top to bottom. So however you do it is fine, but that's why you'll see it both ways sometimes. So you'll count starting at the bottom, I start at the bottom, one unit, two units, three units, four units, all the way up to nine. Nine units. After placing the nine units, you can ask your child what comes next. And most of the time they'll say 10. If they're not sure, you can kind of count with them a little bit. Seven, eight, nine, and then sometimes they'll get it. And if not, then you can say, well, let's look. And we see, oh, it's 10. So now we're gonna count out the tens. So we will put one ten, two tens, three tens, four tens, all the way to nine tens, which is 90. Nine tens. The reason that we say nine tens is because, instead of 90, is because we really want the children to be visualizing in their mind actual 10 bars when we're counting at this stage. So we say nine tens, and then when you get to 90 or nine tens, you'll say, what comes after nine tens? That's right, 100. So you turn over the hundreds, and when we're counting hundreds, 100, two hundreds. We wanna say hundreds again, because we want the children to be visualizing the golden bead um, hundred squares or an actual grouping of 100, whatever manipulatives you're using. So three hundreds, four hundreds, and you will lay them all the way up to nine hundreds. Nine hundreds. What comes after nine hundreds? Hmm, let's find out. One thousand. And how many zeros are in one thousand? That's right, there are three. One thousand. Two thousands, three thousands, four thousands, nine thousands. Wow, we counted all the way to nine thousands. Now ask your child to um, point out some of the different cards. So you'll say, um, can you tap on seven units? And they'll tap on it. Can you tap on six hundreds. Can you tap on nine thousands? Just do a few so that you get a sense of whether they understand um, what the names of them are. And after that, you will, you're just going to um, collect all of your cards again and put them back into the same order that they were when you started. And before um, I put away the work, I again like to emphasize the zero thing. So just remind them, no, you, no zeros in one unit. There are, there's one zero in tens. There are two zeros in hundreds and three zeros in thousands. And then you're ready to start the next lesson. On another day, now that you've done the regular layout, you can do another um, exercise with this same material which I call the mix up. Um, and so what you'll do is again, take your cards and slide them into their place values and turn them over. But this time with your child sitting next to you, 
tell them that this time we're gonna do something a little bit silly. And you actually are just gonna mix up the numbers. And the kids actually usually like to do this part. I usually let them mix them up. I don't know why, but putting the numbers in the wrong order is really funny, <laughs> really funny to this age group. So now what you're gonna do is just give the cards to your child and tell them to place them in a vertical column, either top down or bottom to the top, whichever way you do it, um, and make sure they're in the right place value column, but in any order they want to. So they will just place them out of order um, all the way to the top. Now they can't place them over here. They have to be in the right place value. So they'll place them all the way to the top. Okay. And you will do the same thing for all the rest of them. So now I've laid all of the cards out and once your child has them all laid out on the mat, um, you're going to test their recognition. And we did this with the layout where everything was already in order, but this is a little bit trickier because when you ask them, for example, to tap on 100, 100 isn't in order anymore. So they have to actually look for it and it makes it a little bit more challenging. So you'll say like tap 100, um, can you tap on 9,000? Can you tap on two tens? Can you tap on eight units, for example? Uh, and then after they have interacted with it enough, then you can say, wow, this is really a mess, isn't it? It doesn't look like it's in the right order at all. Maybe we should put it in the right order. Uh, will you help me and get them to help you to um, put the units, uh, starting with the units all the way to the thousands in their correct order. So once everything has been put in the correct order, um, then you will just slide the cards back into their stack and um, that's the end of this activity. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, would you do me a favor and give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell if you don't wanna miss out on any of my upcoming content. If you teach this lesson differently than I do or if you have any questions, please leave me a comment. I always check the comments and I always respond to them. Um, my next video is gonna be using the golden beads alongside the cards and uh, so I hope that you are able to join me for that. Thanks for watching today and I will see you next time.